Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I hope to talk a little bit about fire safety and what I do to plan on keeping myself safe here in this workshop. So the very first thing that I think anybody needs to do to apply to your own workshops, your own lives, when you're taking and doing the subject of blacksmithing, the craft of blacksmithing, whether you're in your garage, you're in a woodshed, you're a back shed, you're a back lot under an oak tree, under a pine tree, that's probably a bad idea. Don't do it under pine trees if you can. Uh, but, um, you know, no matter where you're at in the whole of the United States or abroad, the biggest advice that I'm going to start with, very first and foremost about fire safety, is common sense. Uh, if there's something in the way that could catch fire, remove it out of the area that it could catch fire. Basic common sense, right? Uh, don't leave things unattended. That means, you know, don't leave your forge running with the blower going and then go answer a phone call and come back 20 minutes later. You know, don't get sidetracked. If there's flame going on, you should be there tending that flame like blacksmiths do. We are keepers of the flame, right? So we need to be around the flame when it is running and make sure that we are there and managing embers or anything that could pop or otherwise dislodge itself from the fire pot and go somewhere in the shop to some undisclosed uh, location until, unfortunately, it might burn your place down. So, you know, again, use common sense, right? If something's hot, if something you've just been welding, maybe stick around for a few minutes and make sure, you know, like, don't go, okay, I'm going to finish this last beat and then I'm going to go out to supper. Maybe you might want to take and make sure that they're, wherever you are welding, do a fire check. I've done this for many years, even in my old shop. I would do a fire check two, three, four different times during the day. And I would even sometimes come out once or twice during the evening hours after I'd done been forging for a couple hours just to make sure that there was nothing alight, nothing that could catch fire. So the biggest thing that I plan on doing in this shop is keeping a good amount, a healthy amount of fire extinguishers around. Unfortunately, I do not have the money to be able to spend on like a sprinkler system, although I doubt that would do much good in a building like this that's very hollow open, you know, 2,000 square feet. I do not believe that that would be a, a, an adequate system to have installed and very costly nonetheless. So I do not have the money to do that. So I plan on keeping a lot of fire extinguishers around and keeping them up to date and making sure that the tanks are certified. That's one of the biggest things I plan on doing along with the whole common sense deal. Now, it hasn't escaped anybody's attention here on YouTube and online that I have moved and I am in a much larger workshop space now. And as you can see, it's a timber framed construction. So that means there's a lot of really old dry wood here. So that elevates the fire concerns. Uh, and as been brought up by many of you on several of my different videos talking about this shop and kind of the plans for this place. Okay, so what am I doing to prevent a stray spark from hitting something like this wood and igniting the whole place and burning the place down? Again, it is that common sense is keeping that observance. You know, when there's fire, I'm around. When there's when everything's cool and dead out for the evening, then I can go in once I've done a, a walk around and a fire check to make sure things are done. Other than that, not really anything. I'm going to be slowly cleaning this place, keeping it cleared out, making sure I sweep out all the little nooks and crannies of the old hay that used to be in here. Uh, I've done a good job so far. There are some areas that are a lot further away from my forging area here that do still have like remnants of hay stuffed down in cracks and things, and those are presented as a danger. So I just haven't got the chance to get there yet. And I haven't really done that much forging yet in this shop. Unfortunately, it's been uh, one thing right after the other, just getting stuff moved and business transferred and things of that nature. So that's one of the things as I get further on, I take a few minutes and I do a little vacuuming. I do some things like that just to keep the place clean and make sure that there's no fire catchers, right? There's no area that something could take and pop off. That brings me to another subject. Your forge fuel that you plan on using, whether it be a gas forge or a fossil fuel forge like what you've got over here, like a, like a nice you know coal or coke forge, that will kind of dictate too. If you are working with charcoal, 
charcoal elevates that risk and that danger because there's all those little fire fleas and embers that pop off charcoal and they go everywhere and they can fly a good distance. So that elevates that fire concern uh, by quite a deal. Now I'm not using charcoal. I am however using a bit of wood to take and light this coke forge that I'm running. I'm, this is my old coal forge you guys have seen in a bunch of videos and I will be putting coke on top of that and I'm just burning solid coke. Now the advantage of solid coke is there's not as much, um, there's no soot, there's no, you know, there's not as much smoke and soot and things like that. It's coming out of the forge. So I've done it that way just for temporary basis. And everything that you see me doing in the next several videos and doing forging and, and things like that, taking care of customers orders and projects this is a very temporary basis eventually i will have a nice brick hearth i will have a brick floor in here there will be things that i have done this whole back wall here this all the old the older barn lumber here will be replaced with newer lumber um, and you know you won't be able to see the light cracks through there because i don't plan on having snow freeze my backside uh, during the winter months, uh, but all that takes time. It takes a lot of money uh, that I just currently don't have. Uh, quite frankly, Jessica and I are tapped from our move. You know, uh, we spent an entire life savings to try to get this place and, uh, and and make this move happen, make this dream happen. So we're just counting on the Lord to provide a, uh, provide for us in this meantime. But I got to get back to work somehow. So you just can't have everything perfect. Uh, you could come. You could check out one of my previous videos if you haven't seen it yet i'll link it up in the description down below it's about talking about coming full circle where i talked about that a little bit but that's too much of a deviation we won't go down that rabbit trail right now so floor the shop floor is dirt it's a dirt floor i haven't seen dirt catch fire unless there's something on it to catch fire uh, so keeping the the area raked pretty pretty frequently is part of maintenance of a dirt floor to keep it level and keep it raked nicely um, and somewhat wettened down, somewhat dampened down so you keep down the dust. Uh, that's kind of just a little bit of part of the process of maintaining a dirt floor. So the dirt floor is not an issue, but anywhere that had old hay or something like that could become a fire danger, and I do plan on keeping that in check. The next thing that I'd like to say is most forges that I have heard about that guys have had their shops burned down most of the time from what I have heard it was not the forge itself that actually caught the building on fire it was because of something else grinding sparks that's a big concern that's why my modern shop or the metal shop where I'm doing where I've got all my drill presses and grinders and welders will be very modernized. Uh, that side will be very modernized. When I get a chance, it'll have basically steel siding walls and ceiling with, hot, with electrical light panels and things like that. So the odds of a stray spark catching somewhere and igniting something is going to be almost slim to none. So it's going to be all steel and concrete. So there's nothing for that to catch. But stray sparks from angle grinders those are a big deal anytime you're torch cutting stuff i've heard that has caused fires in shops before and one of the biggest burners of shops that i cringe every time i see someone online do it is having your oil container inside your shop when you're quenching your knife blades or hammer heads and things like that that is one of the biggest burner downs of shops that I have heard about and I've known I've known a few guys that have actually lost shops because of it so if you're doing that in your garage or in your shed or your whatever again the safety Nancy here is going to say you know take that outside at least the quenchant portion and you know go that way sometimes that's not handy I get that it's easier to have it right by the forge but you are taking an elevated risk to have oil in the shop. One great person to check out if you want to see how he kind of manages that a little bit uh, with heat treating oil and stuff that I really like is John Switzer over at Black Bear Forge. He has, I'm not sure which video it was that he's done. If I can find it, it'll be linked in the description down below. But he basically has an oil can inside of like a trash can. It's like an open top thing. So he has to step on the pedal 
it opens the top, he quenches the thing, right? If it flames up, he can let off the pedal and boom, the thing shuts, right? That's, and it kind of snuffs the flame, basically. It starves the flame for oxygen. I feel like that's a very safe, uh, safe setup. And he's a great person to ask some of those fire questions to because he was a volunteer firefighter for, uh, for a number of years. I think volunteer, or he might have been professional firefighter for several years. But yeah, go check out John Switzer at Black Bear Forge. Great guy uh, if you haven't met him already. So that's some of the stuff that I'm going to do. It's not perfect around here, uh, folks. That's, it, you know, it's not perfect. It's not where it's wanting to be. That evolution is just going to keep going as I have funds to do stuff. Um, you know, if you like to take and, you know, help support Jessica and I with what we do and help support the funding of this shop, doing videos and this continual effort to take and make this place a pretty grand, sweet place, not only for myself, just but for the blacksmithing community as a whole eventually. A great way of you doing that is just sharing these videos around. Uh, just the getting that watch and that interaction and, and getting new subscribers and things like that, it does eventually help with like AdSense and things like that, um, which just kind of indirectly supports this whole thing that we're doing. And uh, that really does, uh, we really do appreciate everybody who shares our content. We, sh we appreciate all of our new subscribers, all of our old long-standing subscribers that's been with us from the beginning. Jessica and I really do appreciate you. And so thank you for the great questions. Thank you for the concerns for those of you that had concerns about the fire control around here. Again, it's, it's common sense. I don't want my shop to burn down just as much as the next guy. So uh, you, I will hopefully bring you guys along for a lot of that as we get to you know, upgrade this shop and progress it forward in the future. If you'd like to support us directly in what we do here, a great way of doing that is checking out our website over at blacksmithpds.com and consider purchasing a power hammer plan and or um, a blacksmith cheat sheet that's around business and stuff. That does greatly uh, help us out. So if you guys have any other questions, drop them in the comments section down below. If you have comments, if I didn't cover something, uh, and you know what, I'll pose it to you. What do you do in your shop for fire mitigation to take and make sure that you don't get uh, uh, your shop burnt down or something like that. Drop that down in the comment section down below so this way we can all learn from each other. So that's it for today. As always, God bless you and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.